In this video, we're going to take a look at the two-tailed test for population proportions. Because the process is exactly the same as it is for one-tailed tests, we're going to jump right into a question. So researchers, as researchers in an Apple-funded study reported that 0.5% of participants received irregular pulse notifications indicative of possible AFib. So that tells us that P is 0. careful 005. Remember, it's given as a percentage. We move it two places to write it as a decimal. So that will also be our null hypothesis. To improve the benefits of pulse notifications, it's important to identify the percentage of people receiving false notifications. A cardiologist is concerned that the reported percentage of people receiving these notifications is not accurate. That's what tells us that the alternative hypothesis is not equal to, because not accurate doesn't say it's too high or too low, it just says it's wrong. To perform the hypothesis test, the doctor conducts a simple random sample of N equals 2,315 people who own Apple Watches and asks if they have received a notification of an irregular heartbeat. Nine of the respondents, X is nine, uh, claim to have received such a notification. Does this evidence support the cardiologist's claim that the percentage of people who receive notifications is not 0.5% use alpha of 0.01? So again, the only thing we're missing here is p hat, which we will compute on the next page, which will be 9 divided by 2315. So we already know it's a random sample. Uh, obviously, this is a success-fail situation because we're dealing with either you did or you didn't. And then we're also dealing with a limited number of trials because we have n is 2315. And then we can do the math to find np and NQ. And if you'd like, you can also create a space for that in Excel, which we didn't do last time, but I can show you when we um, look at this question in Excel. Let's continue with our calculations. Again, we've already come up with our null and alternative hypotheses. And now we're going to gather data and collect the necessary sample statistics. So for our test statistic, again, same function that we used in our last video, p hat minus p, or observed minus expected, over the standard deviation. Uh, keep in mind that p hat was found this time by dividing 9 by 2,315. And when you're doing these calculations, I encourage you to not use some rounded value, but to use the exact value, whether you're using a calculator or Excel. And I find a z-score of negative 0.7588. Now, the critical value, again, this is a two-tailed test. So because it's two-tailed, when we look at that, that curve and we know our alpha level is 0 0.01, that means on each side, alpha is split into two parts. So this is not alpha, this is alpha divided by two. So it's 0 0.01 divided by two, which is 0 0.005. And that's why that's the number that I have to use for the um, norm s inverse function so that I can find that this value is negative 2.576 and this value is positive 2.576. So again, if I'm looking at the rejection region, uh, my critical value is way on the outside here, but my z-score, here's zero in the middle, my z-score is much closer, negative 0.7588. So I can see certainly that I should fail to reject the null. The other way that we do that as usual is to look at the p-value. And now again, remember when you're finding the p-value, you're going to find the p-value times two because it's two-tailed. So when I find the p-value, what I'm doing is I'm essentially finding everything to the left of this and everything to the right of the score corresponding positive z-score. So if your z-score is negative, this is how I would do this in Excel, I would take two times, and then this would be norm s dist of the z-score that I found. Either way, again, this p-value is less than alpha, I'm sorry, is greater than alpha, 
and that says that we should be failing to reject the null, which is the same thing that the rejection region told us. So again, as we already said, we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis based on our data, and you can either cite the p-value or you can talk about the rejection regions. This means that the evidence collected does not support the alternative. So there's not strong enough evidence at the 0.01 level of significance to say that the proportion of Apple Watch users receiving false notifications is different from 0.5%. Creating an interval, again, just asks us to use the critical value. We're still using that same formula. Remember, this is using p hat and 1 minus p hat as these two values. And we find 0 0.00056 and 0 0.00522. And then again, we are looking at whether or not 0 0.005, 0 0.005, 0 0.005, 0 0.005 falls between those two values. And obviously it does. And therefore it supports rejecting um, failing to reject, sorry, the null hypothesis. Again, we're going to use that same spreadsheet we used for a one-tailed test. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to complete it for a two-tailed test as well. I did want to point out that you can let Excel find NP for you. So NP and N times 1 minus P, so you can use this to check the conditions. If you want to get really crazy, you can do conditional formatting and make it red if it's less than 10, but you get the idea. You can use Excel as little or as much as you want. In terms of finding the values, for a two-tailed test, the critical value, remember, is alpha divided by 2 because we have to split alpha into each tail. So I'm taking norm S inverse of 1 minus alpha over 2, and I did that so that it's positive. If I just did alpha over 2, uh, that would give me a negative value, and I'd have to use the absolute value function to make it positive. The p-value is, again, up to you if you want to take the if-then approach or this approach. So remember, this approach is saying, if I have my normal curve and I have a z-score, whether it's negative or positive, I'm going to look at it as being positive. So I'm going to look at this one, and then I'm going to take two of those. So to find the area to the right of positive 0.75876, that's 1 minus norm s dist of the positive value, comma 1, and then I'm taking it times 2. So that's going to give me my p-value, and then feel free to use the reject, fail to reject hack for the if-then statement. In terms of the margin of error, it's exactly the same thing we did for a one-tailed test, except that I need to use my two-tailed critical value instead. And then again, my interval is always centered at p-hat, but now I'm using my new margin of error. And as we can see, all of these values match up with what we had found by hand. That is all for one sample test that we are going to cover. Um, next, we're going to take a look at what happens when we have two samples. So we're going to look at two sample means where sigma is known, a one-tailed test.